Welcome to this tutorial request in which we will be creating a checkpoint and respawn system. So let's jump into it. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So this is what we will be creating today. We have a very simple uh, level put up here. So we have a few platforms here in front of this character, which we can jump to. Each of them has a checkpoint in front of them. And we also have a system. So we have uh, initiated so that the Z kill plane is just below this platform. So if we jump off here, we, we die. And we can see that our character respawns at the player start that we had here. However, if we move over and reach one of these checkpoints, we get a little visual indicator that it has been reached. And if we were to jump off and die now instead, we get to respawn at that checkpoint location instead. So this is what we will be creating today. Here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.26. And what I have set up here is just a very simple level. So I have placed these different uh, platforms that we can uh, make use of to jump from. And I have also made it so that when we have our character and it falls off one of these platforms, it dies when it touches the Z kill plane. And how that works is uh, I took one of these platforms and I checked what kind of height it was on. And then I went to world settings and I searched for kill. Then you get the kill Z plane and this is the height at which your character automatically dies if it reaches. So I just put it a few meters under this height so we can have it die pretty quickly if it falls off the platform. This is essentially everything that we have created so far. And now we're going to be working on adding a respawn system and a checkpoint system. So this is going to be pretty simple. Uh, to start off with, we're going to be creating a game mode because a game mode is generally where rules like respawning is uh, handled. So we'll go to Blueprint class and we'll type in game mode and we can choose game mode from this list here. We we'll call it bp underscore game mode. Opening that up, this is what we're granted with and we can just go here and remove all of these events we will not be needing them. First up, we're gonna add an event. So we right click and type in post login. Now this is an event that is called in a game mode whenever a new player successfully connects to a game. It provides us with a player controller reference. And since this is a single player game in this example that we're doing here, we're going to be promoting this variable so we have it saved for later on. We will be saving it as controller ref. After that, we immediately want to restart the player, and I'll explain why in a moment. So type in restart and player, and hook up the controller into the reference here for new player. Now, restart player, as you can see here, is an event that is called that makes a specific controller respawn with its pawn and have that pawn possessed in a player start that is available for it to spawn at. So that's what this is gonna do. Now, if we go to functions and go to override, we can find out that there is an event called, or an event, yeah, an event, called on restart player that says implementable event called at the end of restart player, which is the event or function that we just called. So we click this and we get this event available to us. So this we know will play at the end of this. We get an input here, that's a controller object. And at this point, we know that the controller has a pawn. So what we can do is we can get a controlled pawn from this. And now we have the pawn of the player. Each pawn has an event on it called on destroy. It's an uh, event dispatcher technically. So if we drag off from this pawn and type in on destroy and bind, and hook this up. We now have said that whenever this pawn is destroyed, we want to listen to it. And when that happens, we want to call a specific event. To create an event, we can just drag off here, add event, add custom event, and call this something like pawn died. Now, so this event will happen whenever a pawn is destroyed. 
And what we want to do at this point is just restart player again. And here we connect our controller reference that we saved earlier. So what's going to happen now? A player logs in, we save the controller, we tell that player to restart. It gets a pawn, it gets possessed, it gets put at a player start. When restart player is called, in the end we're going to get that pawn and make sure that we listen to its destroyed message if it ever happens. When that happens, we're going to do the restart player all over again, which gets us a pawn, possesses the pawn and places it at a player start location. So, compiling and saving, going out here, you can see that I have a player start already here on my platform. And if we now go to world settings and we change the game mode override to be our game mode that we have just created and save, we should now be able to restart indefinitely. Like in the beginning, like I showed you, and we jumped off the platform, the third person character died and we didn't get to see anything more. Also, we need to make sure that we have a pawn class here. So in this case, we can choose to use uh, any character that we want. So I can choose the yin player character, for example. If it wants to update. Essentially. So when we have played before, I jumped off the platform, the character died and we just had a empty screen essentially. Now what's going to happen is instead that when the player, player character dies because it's hitting the Z key, Z plane field, it will then call upon its destroyed event, which we have now a listener for, which will then restart the player and get a place to restart from. I will let the compilers here, uh, the shaders uh, compile and then I'll get right back to you. Shaders are now compiled. Let's give this a try and see if this works. So we press play. Our character loads in very fancifully. We jump off the cliff and we die and it respawns again at the player start. And we can do this over again if we wanted to as well. So now that all works and it's very neat and such. Uh, let's move on to actually adding our checkpoints. So creating a checkpoint is very easy. We create a new blueprint class. We make it of type actor. We call it BP underscore checkpoint. We open it up. And what we want to have in here is, first of all, a collision volume. So let's add that. And let's add an overlap for this one. And that is essentially everything that we need here. We just want to make sure that it's big enough that uh, it covered a platform essentially. So we can drag it out here. We can rotate it a little bit like so. And let's make sure that it's looking proper in size by opening up this window. Like so, and from here we'll just Scale it sideways and upwards. And that should be everything that we need. Compile and save, and we should be done with that. Now, the point of a checkpoint is to say, uh, when you have passed me, I'm going to be your new respawn location, essentially. So we need to tell the check, have the checkpoint to tell the game mode that that's gonna happen. To do that, we're gonna add some communication with our Blueprint interface. So we go to Blueprints, Blueprint interfaces, call it BPI update spawn location. We open that up, we rename the function to update spawn location, and as an input here, we're gonna choose an actor. So an actor and object reference. We can call this new location. Now opening up our game mode, we can go to class settings and we can add this uh, interface. So the update spawn location one. So now we are able to send information to this game mode that uh, a new location is sent. So we go back to our checkpoint. We go to our overlap event in our event graph. And we say to uh, get game mode 
And if this is overlapped, we want to say that the updating of the location should happen. Now, we don't need to do any casting or anything like that because we have made it an interface, so any game mode would, will do. We don't have to have a specific one. And for the location, we know it's going to be an actor. And the actor in this case is going to be this blueprint because this is where the, the, the respawn is supposed to happen at this checkpoint. So we'll just type in self and we have a reference to self and we're all done. And now we could, let's place out some of these. You can also see I put some numbers here to see that we're easily on the, the correct platform. So alt dragging, I have now placed three different checkpoints or two checkpoints, one on two, one on three, and the one we just have a start. Now, how do we make use of this? Well, in game mode, if we go to functions and override, there is something called a uh, let's see here. Spawn default pawn four. I think this is the one. Using a start spot. Let's see. So what we want to have here is this is returning a pawn object reference. This is the wrong function. Let's remove that function. Let's look again. Uh, do, 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 do. Find player start. Right, because we want to find the player start. This is essentially what we're after. This should be it. So, going from here, we want to uh, have a actor chosen as player start. Usually a player start. Exactly, this is what we're after. So, we can add a variable here and we can say uh, spawn location. And despite it's a location, we will make it a type of actor. And so, since we have the interface from before, we can now update or implement that event. Going in here, we can say our spawn location is supposed to be set to whatever this value we send in is. Now that part is done. In our function now for find player start, we can say that we want to return uh, spawn location here essentially. However, just doing this will not work because if we try to start now, it will say could not spawn player failed to find player start. Because in our code here now, this only works as long as this actually has a reference, but this will only work as long as we're uh, actually have passed a checkpoint. So what we'll do instead is we'll right click on this and make it a validated get. So if it is valid, we're going to send back this spawn location. And if it is not valid, we're instead going to get actor by class and get a player start like so and hook that up. So now we have, if we have passed a checkpoint, that's what we're going to be using. Otherwise, we're going to be using a player start. Let's test it out. So playing here, if we jump off, we get respawned to our player start. If we instead jump over to the next platform, okay, maybe we need to make this platform a little bit closer. Uh, actually, we can just move the platform, that should be fine. And let's move that platform as well. So we move, we jump, we pass the checkpoint over here, and now if we jump off, we respawn and you can see that we are respawning at the number two instead. We can jump over to number three. We should have passed the checkpoint by now and we jump off and we respawn at number three. Now, of course, this isn't, isn't very obvious that we have passed the checkpoint because normally you have a visual indicator of that happening, but that's easily fixed as well. We can just go to our checkpoint and do something like a spawn Niagara system uh, attached will be fine. Take our default scene root, use that as the component attached to. And as a system, can choose anything. Let's do our coin burst. And da, 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 that should all be good, I think. Let's try that again. We run, we jump. 
we get into a checkpoint, we get some coins flashing out showing that we have reached a new checkpoint and we can now jump off and we will respawn at that place. Although now you can see that we are overlapping it again, but that's uh, uh, just a tiny little bug as a consequence of this. So this is how easy it is to set up a respawn system with checkpoints, essentially. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.